I've been wanting to do this video for uh, a few days now, but I'm a little bit behind. I haven't seen any videos, but I have seen video thumbnails talking about Freya Fate Weaver being the next guaranteed champion in the Dick of Fates. So, the way the Dick of Fate works is you pull sacreds. It's usually around, you know, just about 20 sacreds. I think it's pretty much 20 sacreds. I have uh, other videos showing showing that. I, I think uh, the last one I did was Kaja the Rai. That was the last guaranteed deck of fates. But you pull you pull the shards, you get the points, you use those points to flip cards, and hopefully, if you're lucky, you can do it very cheaply without having to pull every single card in the deck of fates. But more than likely, you're going to have to pull every single one because of, you know, that's just the way it is. You know, you do get other rewards too, but is she worth it? I polled asking you guys if you're going to be pulling for Freya. 144 of you voted. Yes, it's not a direct representation. You know, it's a small sample size. X, Y, Z. I, I get it. But at least it gives me some indication of where you guys are at. It's almost almost a split, right? 56. A little bit more of you guys are pulling for yes. Uh, and a few of you guys are polling for no. And some of the comments that I was reading from you guys was that it's, oh, uh, oh, here, this one, this is the one that stood out to me. Don't have the shards. I think the biggest reason for most people not pulling for Freya is probably because they um, don't have the shards. In that case, I think, well, here's what I'm going to do. We're going to talk a little bit more about it. I'm going to give you a reason as to why I think you should and why I think you shouldn't and just let it, let it pass you by. Also, I polled asking you guys if you would be interested in, you know, being a community that you guys are, a really great one. I wanted to find a way to give back to you guys because I would not have almost 3,000 subs if it wasn't for you guys. You guys are pretty awesome. And, um, you know, the thing is, when I'm doing YouTube, it's it's not the easiest thing to stand out and, and grow in in youtube right it, it, raid is already niche enough however the rather particular thing about raid is because there are so many people doing raid now it's not like before when it was just chosen bge incredible john you, you know what i mean it wasn't and, and deadwood jedi or, and uh dm right back then it was just them nowadays there's like a hundred of us and there's a hundred of us talking about the in-game news and there's a hundred of us talking about champion guides and the same dungeon that like we're all talking about the same thing right hard for me to stand out so i figured one of the other ways i could stand out and try to push myself to get to tier three is by doing a forge pass giveaway it's not always going to be a forge pass <clears throat> a forge pass but i'm thinking every time i reach a specific milestone that i set with subscribers I think I'm gonna give back to you guys. Like I, I have the intent of doing it. I'm probably gonna do it. I just wanted to see what you guys felt about it, right? And of course, a good majority of you are actually pretty cool with it. 61 of you voted. You guys are all for it. You're like, yes, you know, you guys support me. I wanna give back to you guys in some form or fashion other than just the content that I do. Um, you know, uh, X, I've already talked about this, but yeah, that, that's basically it. So. If you want to go ahead, uh, go to the community post, vote here. Let me know what your thoughts are. If you're cool with it, if you're against it, I don't know why anybody would be against it, but I guess that was my my initial reason for polling this to see what the pulse was, to see what you guys thought. Now, some of you guys are saying no, and that's what makes me curious. I'd be interested to see if more of you guys voted, what you guys would be saying about this as to why no. Like, obviously, we know why yes, but why no? Uh, the Forge Pass is like, what, 20 bucks? So uh, that's something that I'd be more than willing to do. I'd probably log into your account, and just buy the Forge Pass, hand the account back to you. I'm not going to keep it. I'm not going to steal anything from you. It's going to be legit. I always deliver on all the giveaways that I do. So there's no question about it. I just want to find a way to, one, boost my numbers in terms of subscribers because I really want to get to T3. So this is the pay to win style on YouTube. And uh, I do want to get back to you guys because you guys are an awesome community. So um, you guys scratch my nuts, I scratch your nuts. You know, it's a win-win situation. But let's, you know, back to Freya. Sorry for that little interlude side sidebar there. 
As the title suggests, is she worth that much? I don't know. I haven't read her kit yet, but we'll see. I would think maybe Podrick was worth it. Podrick? Oh, did we do... Po no, Podrick was a, was a path event. I did Podrick. I mean, I got Podrick. I didn't do him. No diddy. But what Freya can do, almost many others can do as well. Passive might be unique, saving your highest crit damage champion once. I mean, Wixwell has a better force affinity provoke, shield growth and buff extension and defense up. Necrit is doing a better job protecting a teammate. Cleanse, block buff, team turn meter increase if you have Necrit. is a neat single move, but it's not that critical. Saying all this, I want to go hard for Ilnis Ilsinia. The last epic from Akagi. Oh, that's why everybody was going for this epic. I was like, why are people doing thumbnails and videos trying to go for Ilsinia? And I just realized, yeah, it's she's the last epic, or she's one of the epics that you need for Mikage. One missing void rare, what do you guys think? So, let's go ahead and dive into the kit here. Attacks all enemies, it's an AoE, that's pretty good for an A1. You have a Provoke, that's a 25, 30, 40. Masteries, 45% Provoke on an A1. You could do counterattacks with this skill. When a shield buff placed by this champion is removed by damage, occurs once per turn. So, you know, that's pretty good too. You could give her counterattack masteries, put some counterattack gear on her. By the way, do any of you guys know if I have three counterattack accessories, does that increase the chance of me counterattacking as opposed to just putting one? Because it's like, what, 5% for. Let me see here. Let me see real quick. Because if I put counterattack masteries, or not masteries, like this is 5% chance to counterattack when hit. But if I have an entire row down here, is that 15% chance to counterattack? Because that would be pretty cool, right? But I, I was never really sure. I thought I'd ask. Um, places increased defense. AoE increased defense. Two turns on your allies. That's a three-turn cooldown. Places a shield buff on all allies. Value of the shield proportional to this champion's defense and each target max HP. Hmm. So I'm assuming a big shield... And everybody's max HP. So it adds. So it's like her defense. Plus the cha our, the target champion's max HP. Prismatic Aegis. Um, sure. Sure. And the reason I say sure is because... There's champions that already do this kind of thing. Increased defense... Shields are pretty nice. Shields are useful, I'm not going to lie. But how useful are they? And where I'm at in the game, all I'm thinking about nowadays is Hydra. Because there's not really much else for me. Centronis is kind of whatever, whenever it happens. Siege isn't really anything. Um, Live Arena, I'm only doing to do Marius. But I hate Live Arena. I'm never going to do it again once I get Marius. Let's look at the third one. Removes all debuffs from all allies. Okay, that's pretty nice. Other champions that do this too, though. Places a block debuff on them for two turns. Also fills turn meter of all allies by 20%. That's on a three-turn cooldown. Now, my opinions, guys, are mostly based on me right now. I'm trying to think about other people and their accounts and who she might be good for or who she might not be good for. But right now, in this exact moment, I'm thinking about me and my account. Five turn cooldown for the passive. Increase this champion's defense by 5%. Each time an ally inflicts a critical hit, up to 50%. Cool. So she gets a boost to 50%, up to 50% of her defense, which is also going to affect the shield growth, the value of her shield. Prevents the death of an ally with the highest crit damage except this champion. Keeps them alive for 1 HP when hit with a fatal hit. If multiple champions on this team have this skill, only one will activate. Then heals that champion by 20% of their max HP. Then gives them an instant turn. On paper, this looks pretty good. I Well, let me, let me, let me, let me think about this. If, if we're thinking about Arena... I could also see how this might be a really good thing, right? Because if, like, Rotos gets hit and he's got the highest crit damage, he stays alive and then he gets a turn. He gets a heal and then he gets an instant turn, right? That's That would be pretty cool. But it's also kind of 
niche a little bit, don't you think? Then increases all ally uh, ally defense in all battles by 30%. So Force Affinity defense-based champion. She looks cool. She's a limited time event champion. Is she going to do much for me? I don't think so. I'm being real with you guys. I don't think she's going to do much for me. I don't see where she would I don't see where she would slot in to, to anywhere. My Hydra teams, I don't see her bringing anything more than what's already there. Arena teams are kind of already set. Like this the stuff that she brings is kind of it's cool. But uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of other areas. Uh, the dungeons. Maybe, uh, what about? Uh, let me see. Phantom Shogun. Maybe some survivability. But not really. Turn meter fill. Three turn cooldown. Sand Devil. Debuff removal. Turn meter fill. Increased defense. I mean, he's just going to hit hard anyway. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe I need more time to think about it, but like, what do you guys think? As an end game player who's already doing everything, like what, like for an account like this, yeah, I can see how how Fate Weaver might be really good. But for, for me, who has the ability to switch through everything, I don't know. I might go for her just because, wait, is she limited? Like, is she only gonna be available during this Asgard event? I feel like I should know this. I'm the CC here. I think I read somewhere that they're going to be available to pull later on. Obviously, Centrano, she's going to be useful. But Faction Wars, if you don't have anybody, she's going to be useful. So I guess as is usually the case, if you have a small roster, if you're a newer player, mid-game, late player, if you're not completely able to compete in Arena or Hydra too well, she could definitely bring some mechanics for you. Same thing in, in the dungeons. But I mean, that could be said about a lot of champions, right? Do I think she's going to be S tier? Take my opinion with a grain of salt. I don't think she's S tier. I think she might be A tier. She has a lot to bring to the table. But if you're someone like me who has all of these skills available with different champions. And again, it's my opinion. My account completely jaded. Do not take what I'm going to do as a direct result of as a as a direct result of what you should do. You can just reference me, but don't don't listen to what I'm saying and say, oh, "Okay, I'm not going to go for it." Um, yeah, I don't I don't know if I'm going to pull for her. Uh, it doesn't really seem like she would do anything for me other than just adding to the collection. Y you know what I mean? Which I mean, if if that if that is the case, then yeah, sure. You know, plus pulling shards is always a fun video. Right, might get something else along the way. I think that's about it. I mean, if like here's the here's the other question that I know I'm gonna get asked. Like, should you spend money? Should you spend money to get the shards to acquire Fate Weaver to get Freya? That depends on everybody's situation. If you have the money to just drop, sure. But then again, the other side of that is you're going to eventually get other champions that do a lot of these things. Like, AoE on the A1 isn't that uncommon. Provoke, it's not even, it's not even like 60%. It's like 45% at best. You know, that's not useless, but it's also not, like, you, you, you might as well just have, I, I don't know, like a Provoke set on. Uh, shields, relatively common. Increased defense, not the most common on all allies, but it's still there. Debuff removal all around, and then block buffs. Like, these are all things that are... She doesn't bring anything new, is my biggest thing. She's not bringing anything that isn't already here. The other thing is this, right? And we talked about this a few videos ago, where it's like, you can pull... You can fuse, you can do all these things for a champion, and then you're going to rework your team to incorporate this new champion, whatever team that is, whether whether it's your arena team or your Hydra team, and then a new champion's gonna come along later that does even better, and before you know it, you're just part of this cycle where a new champion comes in and then you're spending hours again to rework this new team. So, you know, my my view here is gonna be a little bit cynical. 
a little bit skeptic, ambivalent, if you will. Maybe it'll err on the negative, but I'm not too convinced for me personally that I, I should go for this. This is not gonna be like a, a no-brainer champion for me. This is gonna be like, well, I th you know, it's gonna be like this, right? If I feel like it in the moment, sure. If I don't feel like it, I'm not gonna do it. Should you do it, that's up to you. Take everything that I've said with a grain of salt, make your own decision, you know, think about it. And then if you can do it, if you wanna do it, go ahead. Um, one more argument I've heard is, you know, a guaranteed is a guaranteed, probably gonna be the best investment that you, quote unquote investment that you're gonna have for your account. Another thing is better to have the option than to not have the option. So there's that. I mean, if you're sitting on like 50 sacreds, sure. Right, because you're still going to be sh in in shooting distance, in, in striking dis distance for any other events that might come up, right? And by the time that next event comes up, you're probably going to have back to like 40 or 50 shards. So it really kind of just depends on, on it. But let's see what people are saying. Better question, is Freya better on average than the legendaries you'll get from 20 sacreds during a 2x? Definitely. Yeah, she is definitely better than... The average of the fusion champions in the past that have already happened that you're more than likely going to summon because the fusion rates seem to be higher than normal <laughs> like i can't tell you guys how many times in my youtube comments or in discord people are showing me all of their champions and they're always like i i summoned all these past fusions or like i purposely didn't do these fusions and now i summon this fusion and i'm like yeah i told you guys like you know it is what it is couldn't agree more. Just comparing Freya versus Podrick. Easiest decision for me is 100% Podrick. Oh yeah, 100%. If I had to choose between Podrick and Freya, I'm definitely going Podrick. That's a no-brainer. Podrick was a no-brainer champion. This is a no-brainer champion. Freya is kind of like... I would not hesitate for, for Pod If In fact, today, if they were like, hey, we have another Podrick guaranteed event, dude, I'd be going... I'd, I'd go for him again. Because he's that great of a champion. Freya, you know, it's a little iffy. In my opinion, the guaranteed champs are better than average. So pulling unless you're waiting for us. So pull unless you're waiting for a specific 10x event. If RNG is willing to be a dick, you could go up to 56 shards in the red for a Lego. That's true. Not only is this one better than average, probably up in the top 10% of champions, especially for champ protection that she offers. Also a guaranteed 20 rather than a 24% chance to get a Lego normally. <clears throat> Sorry. And on top of that, a guaranteed Lego where Mercy won't be reset. So if you don't pull a Lego, you have to you have wiggle room for a 10x or progressive if you want. Plus, it'll be in a deck. So odds are you're going to get some half decent rewards along the way. Quite a few upsides going for her uh, side benefits. Yeah, fair points. Fair points. Got 10 sacreds, but a decent number of ancient shards. If I pulled how the sacreds and how many ancient shards or how many sacreds and ancient shards would I need? Let's see. Assuming the, the Dick of Fate uh, event is, you know, a standard 20, and you have 10 Sacreds and about 50 to 100 Ancients, if you're early to mid-game, she's probably worth pulling for. So, he's saying probably if you only have, like, 10 Sacreds, but you have about, like, 100 Ancient Shards, then you might be in the clear to go ahead and get her. So... She's going to be the best cleanser in the game. Many people will want her down the road. If you have the resources, you should be going for her. Eh. Yeah. And she's not wrong. But then again, look at that. Uh, if holds the crown for the best cleanser. Yeah, but he's a mythical, no? She also has to outbeat Elva and Mariska. Okay, Elva I can understand. But when you're putting in Mariska and Galathir, I mean, you have to be... Let's be real here. Not everybody's going to have a good shot at getting Galathir or Mariska. I would say she's a great cleanser. But not the best turn meter. I still think Pytheon is a better cleanse, though. That heal comes in clutch. Yeah, and I think Pytheon's got a better better pla uh, passive. While I do Pytheon as a beast, Freya can help your nuker out and keep and help prevent stuff like block revive from happening to them. True. But that, again, that's also a very niche thing, right? At least for a turn, but in PvP, this could be massive. Yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to downplay it, but also... I tend to err on the side of cautious because again, a lot of things look good on paper, but in practice, they don't always end up being the same because the same can be said for revive on death, right? The same could be said for revive on death. 
when I use cardio and I use his AOE cleanse and then I put up the revive on death, they come back. My champions come back, but oftentimes, oftentimes they don't do anything because they, they end up getting hit again and they're dead. So it's like in, in theory, it's one thing. In theory, it's great, but in practice, it's another thing. And that's my fear here, right? Freya keeping your new girl alive, in theory, sounds good. And I, I, you know, again, take my opinion with a grain of salt, but like I haven't seen any videos, so maybe, I, maybe I, I'm talking out of my ass here, but as I'm thinking about it right now with my limited knowledge, I don't know. Like this, this seems like in practice, it might not work out the way we always want. Imagine you Wu Kong in a ghost second team getting hit by Foley, but instead of being dead for good, he can get the instant turn from her passive, nukes and steals all their buffs. Yeah, that would be the ideal situation. That's the ideal situation. She could create a huge swing turn just from your nuker getting hit, paired with someone like Rotos, unless you get the block passives, look out, I'm excited to play with her. Yeah, that's a positive way to do it, but it'll probably be frustrating playing against um, people in Arena. Another editor, Redditor, pointed out double hits would like to kill your nuku through her passive probably like if you go up against uh, ataris a double hit is probably going to hit through freya's passive unless you get the heal first and maybe survive the second hit or if you go up against leorius with a double hit you're getting swiped away you, you know what i mean or if you're getting hit with an ally attack you, you see you get the heal, but then they would have to survive this. Oh, he's saying it right here. In this instance, Foley would still King Wukong block revive with um, him. Exactly. I think Scratch demonstrated this in a video with Narcissus and Freya together. Yeah, again, um, trust trust Scratch and trust other content creators before you trust me. So if, if they're saying it, it's probably more than likely going to be worth it. If they're saying it, it's worth it. But but again, um, I've, I'm not saying this is what they do. But I've heard people say that a lot of the other CCs hype up certain champions and up play certain champions for, I don't know, the view or whatever it is. I don't know for a fact, but that that is something that is always, I'm not saying anybody's doing it, but like I can see where people are coming from is what I'm trying to say, because people have pointed that out to me, that CCs often do things for the views, which is, you know, it, it is what it is. I'm not saying anything more than that you, you guys get what i'm trying to say i'm not trying to spread hate or anything i'm just saying her passive only saves the first hit which means a double hit would still go through yeah exactly so this would knock me out of plat i'm barely hanging on at, hanging on as it is uh less her cleanse more her a2 her shield can scale oh yeah how does her shield scale is on on the defense is it similar to valkyrie it's going to be huge in stuff like cb and hydra Due to her de uh, decrease, uh, due, her due to her increased defense every time someone has a crit, yeah, that's true. Potential for the biggest shields if the multipliers are right, yeah, she could be. I don't run any cheese teams for Hydra, but if you're the type that does that, then you know maybe this will be a thing for you. Her passive sounds absolutely delicious. I'm definitely grabbing her in a prolonged fight. Increasing 50% defense cap. Death prevention can cycle fast too. Hmm. It's certain to be shard opening. Valeria might throw a curve and make it training. I hope not. Some people are still getting Alatran flashbacks. And no, there's been no confirmation. However, the deck of fates for Kaja, Gwendolyn, and Fatalis have been summon rushes, so people are going to go off of that prediction. Of course, we hadn't had a guaranteed champ from training, champ from training before, before Alatreon. So who knows? Alatreon, did I do? I did that, but I. No, for Alatreon, I think it was a Soul Stone summoning, and I just happened to have a lot of souls saved up. But apparently, because I thought Alatreon was easy to get, I thought that was easy to get. But then again, I did, I don't remember doing champion training for him. You mean Soul Stones? They'll make it Soul Stones. It could be both. That's true. He's the one I didn't get, burns me out when I see I can't index him. Yeah, Alatran's been coming in clutch for me in the Odin event dungeon. God knows how many legendaries you'll get by opening 20 sacreds for her, so it's not 20 sacreds, sacreds it's Freya plus X amount of Legos or rares. Champion itself is very good. She's not only saving your damage either, but also giving him an instant turn, which can be massive. I personally would do anything together, but it's my opinion. You don't get rares from sacreds. 
And Mercy's at 12. When does the event start? I'm keeping an eye on player and play events, but the weekend's events aren't out yet. I hope it would be before the start of Thor's Fusion in two weeks. That's true. There's also a Thor Fusion coming still. Hoping it's this weekend so I can fire off Sacreds for her. I've only had 19 more Sacreds. Everyone is so sure it'll be 20. What's to say Polarium inf uh, inflates it to 23? Yeah, that could be a thing. Yes and no, she's a decent champ, for, but from 20 shards, I could expect something more. The trick is that uh, 20 shards are better in reality. Average 20 shard pull won't give me anything good. Anyway, I do her deck of fates. Hopefully there won't be any inflation. Yeah. There's also a fusion inbound, so pretty sure I might be able I can't stick with both. She's amazing, not the best shield buff. Is she not the best shield buffer in the game now? I'm gonna use her in PvP gold four. And yeah, so gold four, you're probably mid to late game. Ba -ba -ba, going for us. So so yeah, uh I mean, what's this? Hold on, what was this? Saying all this because I kinda wanna go hard for Ilsinia, my last epic from Akage missing one void. Then surely you should be asking, is Freya better than Makage? Yeah. Um, let me see. Let me read a few more here. I was in effort mode for Armands. If you don't need a specific skill, no. For 20 sacreds, and if you don't need a specific skill, no. First, skills look good in Hydra. Second, skill is average. Would be better if it was an AoE. That way, a curse set in Hydra would do a lot of work. Third skill, I would hate it in Hydra. I'm not a fan of block buffs because I feel like the heads always get a 3% chance to steal it, even with a champion at 600 resistance. True. The, pa uh, the passive screams Arena, but I don't think she has enough to be in Arena. That's the other thing. I don't think she's got enough to be in Arena. Like, I, don't, I just don't see her in any of my teams. In live Arena, most people use Duchess, some Mythic, Siffy, and Korra. She can be like second support, but people usually pick someone with card control and she hasn't has such. Hasn't and she hasn't such. If I don't have the sacred to do the effect with blah blah blah, uh, soul reap, direct counter to her passive. It seems like this correlates quite well with my community post, where people are, are almost 50-50 on her. Like some most people are leaning a little bit more towards yes, but then there are some people who are really thinking about i guess the the uh, the flip side to it and i'm assuming the people who are saying now hold on wait are probably people who are more so in line with where my account is where i'm able to just do everything so again it kind of just depends on on you and your account uh yeah i'm interested to hear your guys thoughts though let me know it's